Neil from Essex here, and I'm doing some work in my backyard. We've had a bunch of trees come down here over the winter time, and we're out using an SCL today with a stump grinder on the front, grinding off some of these stumps. But today, that's not what we're talking about. We're actually going to discuss hydraulics today, and mechanically, some of the different types of hydraulic systems that you might encounter on equipment. This SCL is a particularly interesting example of that because it incorporates so many different versions of hydraulic systems. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. Essex, a helping hand with your land. You look at a lot of today's modern equipment, it's amazing how many things we are able to do with hydraulics. Um, but something as simple as like fluid being pumped through a hose is actually way more complicated than what you might guess. When we look at this SCL here, it has a number of different hydraulic pumps in it that create that pressure in order to do the work that the machine needs to do. We're gonna start here with the machine's drive. To drive the tracks forward and back, you have a effectively a hydrostatic transmission, the same kind of transmission as what's in a tractor. Now those pumps are a little bit different than say like a, what you might expect in a hydraulic pump, right? Hydrostatic drives are hydraulically driven transmissions and they use a combination of, of hydraulic pump and two wheel motors. Um, in the case of, those, of this machine, those wheel motors are gonna be located down in the drives for the tracks, but the pump is up here bolted onto the engine. And when you look at the full hydraulic stack, the full stack of pumps being driven off this engine, they're nearly as large as the engine itself. But that hydrostatic pump uses what's called a swash plate. Inside of the pump, when you move the controls front or back in order to drive the machine, you're varying the amount of flow that that pump is pumping and feeding down to the tracks. And you do that with a series of pistons that rides on top of a swash plate. And as that swash plate at up and down, straight up and down, is at full neutral, but as it starts to angle, the pistons inside of the rotating pump now come out further. They're riding against that swash plate. And the further the plate starts to angle, the more those pistons begin to pump. It's a really cool example of a variable displacement hydraulic pump. And that is what drives the wheel motors in a machine like the SCL. So that variable displacement swash plate like you're gonna see in a hydrostatic transmission is not the only way to vary hydraulic flow. When we get up into construction machinery or into big ag where you get advanced hydraulics, electronics actually can be used in order to vary hydraulic flow, right? That swash plate is a very mechanical system, but there are electronic systems as well that give us greater flexibility than what sometimes those mechanical versions will. On a machine like this, if you go up into the dash here on the SCL, you can turn your hydraulic flow up or down from a keypad up there on the machine, and that's to match this machine to its implements. And something like my stump grinder here, I need the full 16 gallons a minute at 2800 PSI that this machine is able to deliver down here to the attachment. But if I went and put a grapple onto the front, that 16 gallons a minute is gonna open and close that grapple way too fast. And so using that keypad, I can dial the hydraulic flow down in order to match my implement. Now the way that's done is a little bit different. This is gonna be a pulse width modulated hydraulic adjustment. And what that is is a small solenoid that sits in the hydraulic line and very rapidly will open and close itself. If you need a lot of flow, it's gonna stay open for a lot longer than if you need a smaller amount of flow. And using that hydraulically, that electronically actuated valve in the hydraulic system, allows you to be able to dial that flow up and down very precisely. And we're starting to see that system used a lot more in a lot of different applications over in sprayers and, and more and more equipment here on the hydraulic side. So it's a cool application of using some simple electrical technology in order to vary that flow. We hear a lot of confusion around the different couplers that are on a manifold like this. When you think about hydraulics, you think about flow, usually bi-directional flow, a, a feed in one side and a return in the other. But when you see attachments like this that have a third line on it, there's often a lot of confusion about the function of that third line. This small one right here in the bottom is called a case drain. So you've got one active port here, one active port on the bottom that are gonna be bi-directional 
and you're gonna see larger couplers because they're handling the majority of the flow. And then this small one right here in the middle that is a case drain. That case drain is there in order to pick up hydraulic pressure in places it doesn't belong. When you go look at this big spinning drum down here on the bottom and this motor that spins the whole thing up, in the case that you've got a lot of pressure and that pressure, say, pushes past a seal, you don't want that pressure to move into a place that it's gonna say crack a housing or cause internal damage to that hydraulic motor. In that case, you're gonna have a case drain line and that's simply a line tapped into the side of that hydraulic motor to pick up that pressure where it doesn't belong and allow it to return back to the machine under what's called a zero pressure or a return to tank line. That line is gonna have basically no restriction in it. There's no pressure that's normally carried in there. It's just allowing that fluid to make its way back to the tank that gets past a seal that it shouldn't. So that's the function of that line right there. You're also gonna notice that these are pretty much always uh, flat face couplers. Um, an ag style pioneer coupler that's found on a lot of small tractors and a lot of older farm machinery is slowly being replaced by these flat face couplers. Now these couplers can be pricey, sometimes two to three times the price of a pioneer coupler, but they stay clean when they're disconnected and they're easier to connect with a little bit of pressure in them. We also really like these manifolds. So since this manifold has this case drain line in it, when you push this coupler back into here, you're gonna see the top pressure coupler push back into the manifold a little bit and automatically dump any pressure that's in this manifold here back to tank using that case drain line. So any time that you have the choice, if you're buying into a hydraulic coupler system for your machine or adding a third function valve and buying attachments, I'd always encourage the purchase of these flat face couplers because they're a lot nicer to work with. The importance of using the right hydraulic fluid in a machine like this can't be understated. When the fluid is engineered into the function of all of these systems, and if you're using a fluid that doesn't match what the manufacturer was expecting, you can get a lot of, say, interesting anomalies. When we're talking about something like pulse width modulated hydraulic flow, right? That flow has a lot to do with the viscosity of that fluid and its viscosity at particular temperatures. And if you're not running the fluid that was kind of intended for that system, you're not gonna get the expected results when you go and start to make some of these adjustments. There's also obviously the wear concern with the additive packages that are put into those fluids and their impact on all of these varying systems and their seals. So while there is no industry standard out there for hydraulic fluids, we have discussed this at length on this channel. I've got a lot of long videos about it. Um, you should be cautious of anybody that tells you to go out and use any hydraulic fluid that meets the standard because the one or two standards that are out there for hydraulic hydraulic fluids might cover maybe 10% of the fluids that are on the market. It's really challenging to be able to go out there and buy a non-OEM hydraulic fluid that you know is gonna work properly in the machine. If you do decide to deviate from that, don't buy the cheapest buckets you can find. Buy quality hydraulic fluids to go into these systems, particularly the engineered fluids that are, say, newer standards, newer engineering packages, right, that are made to go into the newer equipment where you have systems like like this and they're kind of being expected, right? You can go buy some of the cheapest fluids that you'll find out there are things like 303, John Deere 303 that was made back in the 40s and 50s. That's still sold today as an economy hydraulic fluid and it can do damage or say it will do damage in systems that are advanced like this. So be cautious when you go to buy that fluid. The cheap stuff really has a detrimental impact on your machine. Another application of those solenoid operated valves is in what's called a third function kit or a hydraulic diverter. Those are used in order to multiply the hydraulic functions of a machine. And you may look at this one and question if it shouldn't be used in this application, right? You'll notice down here this long hydraulic cylinder that I operate here electronically. Uh, this is an electronically operated cylinder right here that's switched from back here at my operator's position. In the case of this machine, using a hydraulic cylinder here with a diverter probably wouldn't work real well, right? Because we need the full power of this machine going down to the grinding wheel. And if we diverted that over to a cylinder, we'd have a cylinder that's probably moving way too fast, right? You could put some restriction valves in there, but ultimately you're taking away from the power going down to the grinding wheel. And so this electric operated screw cylinder here works really well for this particular application. But 
when we're talking about those solenoids, right? Third function kits anymore are put out on say 30% or so of the tractors that we sell anymore. And you're using those same solenoid activated plungers in order to redirect that flow, just like you would in the pulse width modulated hydraulic pumps. The boom and bucket cylinders here are another interesting method of hydraulic control. One, it's a lot more expected, right? So when you start the machine up, you've got a gear pump that's immediately turning, immediately pumping fluid. That fluid comes up here in order to this hydraulic uh, control stick up here, right? Now that fluid is more fluid is gonna be directed one way or the other, depending on the position of this stick, right? Very expected. But you're gonna notice here feeding this stick are these two solenoid valves. When you start this machine up, even though that fluid is pumping and moving right away, you don't want things to operate immediately, right? It could be unsafe. So the operator needs to stand on their safety platform, engage the hydraulics on the machine, and then all this stuff is gonna to start to work. Now to engage those hydraulics, what you're doing is operating these two solenoid operated valves right here. You unlock the hydraulics, these things will open up allowing fluid to come over here into the control stick that now allows you to operate your loader boom. Aren't hydraulics awesome? <laughs> I have a lot of respect for the engineers that are able to go through and take these Lego building blocks, right? These different hydraulic technologies and techniques in order to make awesome equipment. Um, it's one thing to be able to use the Legos and build the systems. It's another thing to be able to tune and assemble all of this stuff in a way that makes great equipment. Um, and we're really lucky to be able to represent a lot of companies that are really good at this stuff and make great equipment. It's interesting when you have the opportunity to jump from one machine to the next and you can feel different implementations of these same technologies feeling very different between different vendors. So if you're looking for equipment, don't just you know look for the bits and pieces, right? The, swash plates or the PWM operated valves. Take the time to get on a machine, operate it if you can, understand it, and see how all that comes together in that operator's experience because it's not all the same. So if you're shopping for a piece of equipment that we can help or if you have parts or service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.